Obviously, I don't own anything to do with the Scarlet Letter manga. The book was published by Udon Entertainment. The writer was Crystal S. Chan, and the illustrator was Sun Neko Lee. All images used in this review are used for the purpose of reviewing only. Hello! Um, I thought today I would make a short video about this book. This is the manga version of Nathaniel Hawthorne's classic um, American lit book, The Scarlet Letter. I randomly found it at the library and I was surprised how good it is. I actually highly recommend this. I would give this like five out of five stars as a manga because it is a very, very faithful adaptation of the book and I think it works pretty well as a manga as well. I would say this is a good adaptation because absolutely everything in it is from the book. They don't really add anything that's not in there. They even have a short segment that's in the Custom House essay that usually gets put in the front of the book, but the actual essay is super long and super boring, so they only have like the, the couple paragraphs that's actually describing um, Hawthorne finding the Scarlet Letter, so I thought that was pretty clever how they put that bit in to have an extra bit of history, but they don't let it get really boring. Um, it works pretty well as an adaptation because in the book there's a lot of description, like a lot of scene setting, a lot of imagery, and not too many scenes. So the manga pretty much just goes for all the scenes and all the dialogue and sort of implies the description through visual means, which I think is very clever. It's a great way of getting the meat of the story with, um, without getting lost in all the details, essentially. When obviously in a manga, even though this book looks like it's really big, it, it looks really thick, but because it's a manga it goes really fast because that's just the comic book medium. Um, so I think that was a really good choice on the part of the writer, so good job. A few of the techniques that the writer does use is um, mostly with scenes of Hester interacting with the townspeople. She makes what was like a narrative summary slash description in the book into actual scenes, so that's very nice. Like in the book it just says things like she often helped people but sometimes like even like the really impoverished people would reject her but in the manga there's actually a scene of her offering some bread to some um, people who are poor and living on the street and having them reject her so again that's totally in the book they just present it in a slightly different way which is kind of nice and there's even some recurring characters in the manga that are only kind of hinted at in the book like you notice like um, some of the same women who are in the beginning um, at the scene where she's standing out on like I forgot what the platform thing is called where like she has to stand on the platform and be an example like there's some women there who show up later and buy her stuff and then show up at the end and some of them actually sort of warm to her over the course of the manga which is also kind of what happens in the book so that was kind of a clever thing that the writer did to consolidate some characters and make stuff into scenes that was um, more in long descriptive passages in the book. So what does the manga add to the story? For one thing, it is, it is a little bit weird to see all these characters looking like manga characters. Like the first time Hester shows up, it's like, whoa, like she totally looks like a a typical manga girl. She looks like the manga cool girl, like Hamura from uh, Madoka Magica, for example. So it is kind of interesting to see this very particular style adapted to this completely different style, but I think it works pretty well. The main thing I noticed was that everybody is super, super hot in this book. And like, of course, Hester's hot. Um, that Dimsdale is a total bishonen, <laughs> and but even um, Hester's husband um, Roger Chillingworth, he's like a, a totally hot Uji son, and <laughs> I was not really expecting that. It's like this character shouldn't be hot, <laughs> and um, 
the Mistress Hibbins character, who's like this witch-like older lady, is a total MILF in this, <laughs> which is kind of strange. Um, Pearl is spot on. Uh, she makes a really great manga character. And they do this interesting thing with her eyes where her eyes, like, they don't have highlights in them for most of the book, and that's sort of like to make her look kind of off, like, kind of like she's not really a human character. And I think that's a very effective way of visually portraying Pearl's strangeness because she is a, like a very odd character. She is my favorite character in the book, actually. So I'm glad that they captured her personality visually. And then at the end, um, when something kind of tra very traumatic happens to her and it's this humanizing experience, her eyes suddenly, suddenly go back to normal and they have highlights in them like all the other characters. So that was an interesting um, visual portrayal of an emotional change that goes on in this character in the book. There also is a little bit of fan service in this. <laughs> um, there's actually no fan service of women. <laughs> um, Hester is like never really portrayed in a sexualized manner at all in this, which I, I think is makes sense. It, it fits the story, but um, there's a scene which I think is just summarized in the book or like it's a rumor or something where um, Arthur Dinsdale is um, whipping himself like um, because it's like this Catholic idea of self-punishment because you know like the guilt and the sin and all that but in the manga it's kind of it's kind of hot <laughs> like the way they portray it and I'm not sure how I feel about that I mean it kind of makes me think that this is a character who is not comfortable with his own sexuality he is not comfortable seeing himself in a sexualized manner and that when he does express his sexuality it comes out in very unhealthy ways that cause problems for people so you can sort of say that this is another unhealthy way of um, showing like of him trying to show his relationship with his own like physical body and his um, his human side so that would be kind of an interesting way to interpret that scene that it comes off as sexual because like he has no healthy sexual outlet which yeah it, it fits the character it's it's a very messed up character like as, as are most of the characters in this I haven't read the book for a while, but there were very few lines or scenes that I felt like should have been in there and weren't in there. Like everything that I remembered as being important and being interesting and being a beautiful scene was very much in there. So there was only one line that I remembered from the book. It's where um, Arthur Dimsdale has an argument with Roger Chillingworth where he like just snaps at him and storms out. and that seems like a confirming moment for Roger because he thinks like, oh, he has this very passionate nature. He's like, he's done something he's regretted out of anger because like Arthur comes back and apologizes. And then Roger thinks, well, I'll bet he's done other things in a passionate moment that he's since regretted. And that's like another confirmation that Arthur is the dad and he's the one who had sex with Hester and like Father Pearl which kind of spoilery, but it's so obvious. Like, it's not really a secret in the book, like, at all. Like, you can pretty much tell the first time these characters show up who the who Pearl's dad is, so I don't think I'm giving anything away here. But that was, like, a line that um, they didn't really have in the manga, but I remembered from the book, so I could have, I would have liked to have it in there, but overall, everything that... I remember it as being important was in there. So overall, like very good adaptation. They chose exactly the right stuff to keep. Um, so like in both versions, there is this um, theme of sin and guilt and penance and living life knowing that you're imperfect and you've done some bad things. And it's kind of like a hard book to read now because we don't really think of sex outside of marriage as something that's like so shocking and like so bad and such a betrayal of the community. Um, like even in the book, it's kind of like, well, 
she has this much older husband who hasn't been around for a year now suddenly she's pregnant and maybe her husband's dead somewhere it's not really that much of a surprise that she got pregnant i mean they, they still have to punish her but it's like even in the book it's kind of not that much of a surprise there's only like a few things at the end that sort of say like um sex outside of marriage or adultery is like bad in itself like Arthur th seems to think so at the end um there's like a line about um their graves like after their death their graves not being together because like supposedly like because they weren't um legally married in life they shouldn't be buried together or something um but really through most of the book like and this is true in the manga as well sin is more about doing something that the community does not approve of and it's also about not living up to the standards that you have set for yourself so in a way it's less about whether or not your act was harmful than what the community thinks about it and whether or not you are ashamed of what you have done so that's, that's kind of interesting Reading the manga again recently, actually like the worst thing I think anyone does in this story is Arthur not knowing his own child. Because every other bad thing that's done is done against an adult. But this is a really awful thing done to a helpless child. And never getting to know your child seems like such a waste to me and it seems like such a shame because there could have been an affectionate relationship between the, these two characters and it never came to be and it's kind of it's not something I noticed when I was younger and reading this so I think like that is the worst sin in the Scarlet Letter for me anyways I think there's also a feeling, I don't know how much of this was intentional, but you never really see any good relationships, like any society accepted relationships held up an exa of the, as an example of how to live a good life. Even though Hester and Arthur's relationship is never approved, not, not by the characters, not really by the narrator, it is like the most tender, affectionate, yeah, they both mess up and they both do bad things to each other, but like there is the most emotional connection between them as we see it between any characters in the book. And Hester being alone and raising a child as a single mom is the best parental relationship we see in the book. So it seems like just because of what we, focus on like the bad relationships like the outside society the unapproved relationships are the most real and affectionate and supportive relationships that we see so I don't know if Hawthorne is trying to say something about the emptiness of this restrictive society which I mean in the book is the Puritans but you can sort of apply it to any society. I'm not sure if he's saying that they're so focused on driving out sin and creating like this bad example to scare everyone to staying in line that they've actually forgotten what good relationships are and how to identify real evil because like the most like evil demonic character like just does his thing and never ever gets caught by anyone. So I wonder if there is a commentary there that they're not actually supporting good relationships and they're not actually stopping bad people because they're really focused on breaking the rules and this very superficial definition of sin. So anyway, that's some of my thoughts on the manga and I really enjoyed it and I recommend it as a manga. Thanks for watching.